Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Oh, I don't care what the world might be. Just as long as you're here with me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to this place that I call <laughs> the insane asylum without walls. Okay, you know, and this story I want to uh, spark on, and I want to be very careful how I deliver this, is one of the main reasons why I don't like... Um, I, I just have a bad feeling about people and they really need to be vetted when they call themselves um, missionaries, working with the children, aid workers, um, good Samaritans as a whole. A lot of times you have to dig, really, really vet these people because a lot of them get into these situations because they have ulterior motives. For instance, there's a U.S. couple that faced the death penalty in Uganda. Okay? They're a U.S. couple. And they're going to get murked as they are hit with new child trafficking charge. Aid workers tortured their HIV foster son, 10, by keeping him naked and feeding him only cold food. Now, these have been the charges against uh, this couple. Um, Nicholas Spencer and Mackenzie Lee Matthias Spencer are accused of torture. A new aggravated child trafficking charge carries the death penalty. U.S. Embassy in Kampala said that it is monitoring the couple's situation. Ain't shit they can do for them. It ain't nothing you can do for them. If they over there doing this kind of stuff, and y'all talking about Brittany Griner, okay. And, and and why didn't uh, Whelan get a uh, hell? They don't know if he's a spy. Just like these people right here, it looks like they've done the ultimate, ultimate act that is worthy of death in Uganda. So the couple is facing a death penalty um, because now they're hit with an aggravated child trafficking charge on top of the child a tortured uh, charge that they already are battling. Okay? So these both of these people are 32 years old, and they have been in custody since December 9th after they was charged with aggravated torture of a 10-year-old child. The boy who is HIV positive is living under the, their care in the suburb of Kapala. How did he get HIV at 10? Was he born with it? Or did one of these missionaries give it to him? Let's talk about it. Police said that the couple would force the boy to spend the day barefoot and naked and would often make him squat in awkward positions with his head facing the floor or his hands spread widely and that he was only served cold meals from the fridge. The Americans... Uh, citizens are being held at the Lazuro Maximum Security Prison, the country's only maximum security jail, which houses all of its death row inmates. Let's uh, let's see how this is the new um, their it. government reports. On this situation. This is really a, a, a sad day for an American because ain't nothing they can do to help these people. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know if y'all can hear that. They're in court. Come on, I don't hear nothing, really. You know what? 
They're accused of torturing, torture. The American couple was um, arrested and it was, uh, they were charged for aggravated torture of a minor, the child is about 10 years. And um, it was alleged that actually the child was being tortured by making him sleep um, on a wooden platform with no beddings. Uh, he was made to, he was stripped naked and that's how he spent his entire day without clothes and he was given cold food and um, uh, he wasn't attending school so those are some of the things that we are looking at and we hope to bring forth when we finally do prosecute this case. <coughs> The whole judicial system system is black folk, Africans, not African Americans or Adolfs. These are straight Ugandans. And guess what? These people have been accused of kidnapping, child trafficking. Not good. As prosecution, we looked at this case and we filed our objections to the effect that um, the young American couple realized that their visas in, in Uganda had expired. They didn't have any work permits and they were renting. In the suburbs of Kampala, um, which made them a flight risk. So we didn't know if we release them, where are they going to be at? Where can we access them in case they are out of jail? So those are the things we looked at to consider that they should not be granted bail. We also looked at the case because it's involving a minor of a 10 year old. This is aggravated torture. It's a serious offense and it attracts a, a sentence of life imprisonment. So um, what are the chances if we release them that they will come back for hearing? So those are the things that informed our minds. Not actually uh, accept You're a flight them risk. conditions or the bill terms. And also, um, if we release them and in case they go back to their places of the board, they are still living with the witnesses that are going to be our witnesses in the case. So they are likely to interfere with the witnesses that will be producing mm. to prosecute this matter. Mm. Not good. See, because y'all think y'all can go over there and do any old kind of thing. I don't know if y'all heard that. Today we but there is no way they are letting them go. Um, the magistrate said that they are serious flight risk. If they let them go to Kampala, um, of course, they'll be on the next thing out of there. And there are serious, these are serious allegations and charges against this couple where they face death. Okay? Because if they're over there trafficking children, a lawyer for the couple who was not identified was quoted by Uganda newspaper to monitor as dismissing the case as a fishing expedition by authorities, saying they had no evidence. This is the lawyer for the couple now. She was also quoted as saying the new charge doesn't make sense. So in an interview with the newspaper, a woman who says she was the boy's caretaker spoke anonymously about what she saw and also alleged he had a camera in his room watching his every move. The caretaker said, I wanted to leave the job, but I knew if I left without doing something about it, the torture would continue. She added that the couple only abused one of their three foster children because they claimed that the 10-year-old boy was stubborn, hyperactive, mentally unstable, and they used the punishments to keep him in line. They have multiple children. 
So, um, you know, but the witnesses, of course, the prosecutors, um, you know, said, uh uh. The couple cannot enter a plea for the new charge until they admitted they are admitted to a high court. The most recent charge was read to them on Tuesday when they appeared in a magistrate's court. But they were not allowed to make a plea as the case can only be heard at the high court. So Jacqueline Oku, spokesperson for the public prosecutor's office, said Wednesday that we will begin the process of committing them to the high court. But we can't say when that will be finalized so they can be produced in court. Nicholas Spencer is currently listed as working for the MOTIV Uganda, a company that, according to his LinkedIn page, creates a space where makers can refine and scale their business to meet a demand for local and international markets. What is that? <coughs> MOTIV provides creative with the opportunity to access factories, training a tribe, uh, and a marketplace where brands sell their product. Wife McKenzie also works for the Motive, according to the police. She said on the GoFundMe page that she and Nicholas moved to East Africa nearly three years ago and have been doing humanitarian work focused on women's empowerment and education. She also mentions that they are the foster parents to three incredible children. The 10-year-old boy attended a school for children with special needs in Kampala, according to Al Jazeera's. The couple also face charges of remaining in the country illegally as their work permits have expired. They had three Ugandan children with them under foster care, including the victim, the police said. The U.S. Embassy in Kampala did not immediately respond to the request for a comment on Wednesday. Um, it said last week it was aware of the reports of the arrest and the detention of the two American citizens in Kampala, and that it was monitoring the situation. It would not comment further due to uh, privacy considerations. Okay. Now, I want to know what y'all think. Please tell me. I want to know what y'all think about this. Also, what is your opinion about, um, you know, these missionaries and people of that sort that go over to these countries? And, um, I mean, a lot of them do good work. A lot of them in their heart are good people and they want to do good things. And I guess just like everywhere else, you know, you have the bad people <laughs> that go there with an ulterior motive to molest, to traffic. I don't know. Because I want to know how this boy got HIV. Anyway, if you like what you hear, please subscribe and share. Thank you for watching the uh, 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 commercials. I really appreciate it. For those of y'all who do, um, and thank you for those who donated to the channel. Keep donating. I really appreciate it. I'm in line to try to get some new equipment. Uh, and it will definitely change the audio and visuals of this channel. So I thank y'all in advance. And um, may God bless you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.